everyone and it's my huge pleasure to say welcome to our second episode of Three Question Thursdays. Before I introduce our next guest, I want to quickly say thank you to all of you who have visited us on YouTube and those who have sent us a message or an email with your feedback. That was very kind and thank you so much for that. So moving on, our guest this Thursday is the creative, multi-passionate and successful Sonia Sadiq Gandhi. From international student to creative genius, Sonia is a serial entrepreneur and a champion of diversity and inclusion. She is the founder and CEO of a multi-award winning cultural, marketing and event management company Gandhi Creations. Sonia's on the board of the Multicultural NSW, is Australia Day Ambassador and recently ICC T20 World Cup Australia 2020 champion actively promoting the tournament. Sonia was also recognized as a Paul Harris Fellow by Rotary International in 2014. She founded Fashions of Multicultural Australia and directs the Western Sydney Awards for Business Excellence. Sonia is the founder of the India Australia Business and Community Awards, which we'll be talking about a little more soon. Uh, well, so Sonia, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us. And uh, thank you for doing this. Thanks, Patula, for that amazing introduction. Good day, namaste, satsrikal, or salam dosto. It is a real privilege to be sharing my energy with all of you global viewers out there, in particular from India and Australia. This platform, the Indo-Australian Chamber of Commerce has introduced is a very exciting step and I'm looking forward to the series. Thank you, Sonia. Well, it's so good to be chatting and in a new format this time. Um, my first question is around people to people links. So the India Economic Strategy to 2035, authored by Peter Vargas AO, um, talks about a three pillar strategy, economics, geopolitics, and people. And I quote from there, it says the third pillar of the relationship our growing people to people links may over time prove to be the most significant asset of all. So Sonia, you're someone who has created successful platforms for enhancing cultural diplomacy. Um, in your view, uh, what do you think we should be doing to strengthen these people to people links and demonstrating cultural intelligence? We work with various foreign governments on the cultural diplomacy and public diplomacy side. But as a very proud Indian Australian and an Australia Day ambassador have been for many years, I take a lot of pride in the celebration of the Australia-India relationship. But most importantly, I'm a very strong believer that the biggest bridge builders between our two nations are the Australian Indians and the Australians that live in India. These are our true two nation ambassadors because they use platforms like the IAPCAS and others to share their success stories. But do you know what comes out of success stories? The challenges. Because we love success stories. You never get to where you do without the challenges. They are part and parcel of your growth. So the Indian economic strategy that you talked about, Atula, is a phenomenal piece of document or report that our two nations have ever produced, Australia has produced, and it was commissioned by Peter Vargi's AO. In particular, my interest is the people to people chapter. I do believe that we need to enhance, celebrate and harness this on an ongoing basis enhancing and harnessing this relationship. Let me give you an example. Recently, we had a very successful, as we all know, the, the chamber was part of this. The largest delegation of Australian businesses, 100 plus, mind you, led by the Honourable uh, Federal Minister Simon Birmingham, Trade and Tourism Minister, and of course, Stuart Ayers, Minister for Western Sydney in New South Wales. The reason that it was a successful delegation and the outcomes from it were absolutely brilliant is because the human interaction there resulted in business 
the human interaction there resulted in cultural conversations, which are absolutely tie the two countries together. So I believe that the people to people links are very, very critical in ensuring the success of enhancing this relationship further. Thank you, Sonia. Well, the next question is around AAPCA. So the Inter-Australia Business and Community Awards is now in its seventh year. And having attended the one in Brisbane last October, where we signed a memorandum for understanding to partner with AAPCA, I can say firsthand that it's indeed a unique initiative for organizations, diaspora and government to engage. IAPCA has some exciting expansion plans for the future, um, I'm told, and it'd be great if you could, you know, tell our members more about this, Sonia. Thank you so much, Petula, for bringing up the IAPCAs. As a very privileged founder of the India Australia Business and Community Awards, I urge everyone to actually look it up because it's not just an awards gala. It is a platform that celebrates the development of migration, that celebrates the community initiatives of business, that celebrates the investment, and most importantly, shares those success stories through talking about the challenges we face. So the IAPCAs, as we call it, are now in their seventh year. We have a great problem on hand. We've got an alumni of nearly 1,200 over the past seven years, and we're gonna have a structured program, which is very exciting for our alumni. But most importantly, two exciting developments are, one is we're going to be launching a digital leaders collection of all the winners of IAPCAs over the years, which is fabulous case studies, I would say, that people can read and understand a bit more about. The other exciting development is we are going to be taking IAPCAs to India. Most of you know this, but it hasn't been formally announced, of course, because we are looking to, we're not sure when, but it'll happen in 2022. And we're hoping to have it as the largest business event that would go from Australia to India and vice versa. That sounds really exciting. And uh, nominations for APCA uh, Awards 2020 are open. So those of you who are interested, please do visit their website. My last question, Sonia, is from arriving in Australia in 1998 as an international student from India to becoming a powerful influencer. And that's a truly remarkable journey. So if you were to look back, what would be your main message to students or the youth who look to you for inspiration? Thanks, Petula. I know. Do you know how many people ask me, you came as an international student to Australia. How did you do it? Well, let me tell you. When I landed here in Australia, I was dropped off at the wrong campus and I'd come from a flight and it was pitch dark. It was scary as I was absolutely frightened. New people, new language, new surroundings, didn't know what to do. My, uh, I had to walk, I think about, it was a very large Western Sydney University campus. Um, and when I was dropped off, I went looking for the dorm because, you know, you, you, I was living in university accommodation. It was, I was obviously at the wrong campus, but I was looking for the right address at the wrong campus. So that's not going to help. So I, was, I looked for a payphone, and I, it took me 10 minutes to go through the 20 cent and 50 cent coins because I had all this Indian change in my hand. And in that darkness, and I didn't have a mobile phone, I, I put the money in and I rang my dad and I said, look, I'm coming back. There is nothing here for me. I'm really sad and very upset and I've just landed and I will be coming back. And there was one thing and I've got to tell you about my dad, who's who, who's no longer, you know, with us, is he was he always used to listen. He was a fabulous listener, but never said no. So he said to me, Great. He listened to me ranting, like I ranted and vented for about ten minutes on the phone. He said, How about I said, book my flight, I want to leave tomorrow morning. And he said, Great idea. That's a fabulous idea. How about I book your flight for next Tuesday? It was a Tuesday on the day I was calling him. And I said, why next Tuesday? And I off I went for another 10 minutes. And he said, well, give it a week. You've flown halfway across the world, you know, to Australia in a new place. That means you were confident that you were able to live there. Give it a week. And after a week, I'll do that. And that week really calmed me down, settled me down. And I do believe that 
resilience is absolutely critical in any decision that you make or in any uh, thing that you do, whether it's business, a career decision, resilience is very, very important. But I'll share a secret with you, which I've never shared on camera. So I started doing this quite a few years ago, which is quite interesting. And I, and I um, recommend not just to international students, to anyone who is going through stuff. There's three components that I always write down when I feel unsettled. One of them is feel, the other one is how, and the third element is change. So feel just genuinely should describe how you're feeling right now. How should genuinely describe why and how are you feeling that way. And change should describe what you would do to change that feeling. The second thing I'd like to say is a support structure. It is exceptionally important for you uh, in business, uh, in profession, as a student to have a support structure around you and live and breathe through leaders and live and breathe through understanding other people's perspective. I'm very big on perspectives. Do not close off perspectives. So support structure means when I came to Australia, I did not feel like I belonged. My true sense of belonging came when I started volunteering. I volunteered in Australia for years and that was the best thing that I did give my time to causes that were important to me so i felt like i belonged to a certain place which i do now as a very proud indian australian in closing thank you so much to the indo australian chamber of commerce for having me i do hope that i've added some value and benefit to your life but just as my story has shaped me as an individual i urge you to tell your stories speak about them so that we can further strengthen, strengthen the Australia-India relationship through your stories. Thank you. And on that note, thank you, Sonia, for sharing your views, a little of your story, which was really fascinating, your passion, your energy with us. And thank you to those of you who are watching this. Next Thursday, we have an Australian company who has a presence in India who will be joining us. And I'll see you there. Have a great week.